everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to be talking about hypertension nursing care plans. So hypertension is commonly known as high blood pressure. Um, it's a chronic medical condition in which the force of blood against the artery walls is consistently too high. This condition can lead to significant health issues such as heart disease, stroke, and kidney problems. It is defined as having a blood pressure reading consistently above, depending on what your book says, 130 over 80 or 140 over 90. We might even have a slightly different number in your textbooks. Just go by whatever your nursing instructor is telling you to go by when you're doing the lectures. So hypertension is often asymptomatic in its early stages, making regular monitoring important in early detection and management. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, the nursing care plan, the first one. We have three today. Um, and the first one's going to be risk for uh, decreased cardiac output. And so the subjective data, and that's basically the data that the, the patient's saying that they're having, and they're reporting dizziness and lightheadedness. Another one that should be on this list is headaches. Um, a lot of times when people are hypertensive, they, they can get a headache too. So complaints of unusual fatigue, weakness, especially after physical activity. The objective data, now this is the data that you can see or record or you know, physically see. Um, and that would be elevated blood pressure. They're consistently above 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. You can even have a decreased capillary refill time. So our nursing diagnosis, and now a lot of the nursing instructors will slightly differ on how they want it. Some want it as evidence by, some don't. I'm just gonna put it in here so that you have it if you want it. And that's, that's just what we're gonna do. So risk for decreased cardiac output related to altered electrical conduction and increased vascular resistance as evidenced by hypertension, abnormal heart rhythms, and physical symptoms such as fatigue or dizziness. We're gonna do short-term and long-term goals. And for these uh, care plans, I've done both. And the reason for that is some instructors want uh, one or the other or both. So I've just put them both in here and you guys can uh, kind of use them however you want to and you see fit. So our short-term goal, within 48 hours of initiating the care plan, the patient will exhibit signs of stabilized cardiac function as evidenced by heart rate and rhythm within normal limits and blood pressure maintained at or below 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. The long-term goal would be over the next three months, the patient will demonstrate consistent control of hypertension and improvement in cardiovascular health um, as evidenced by absence of symptoms such as dizziness, palpations, unusual fatigue, and adherence to lifestyle modifications, including diet and stress management. Um, so for our nursing interventions and rationale, uh, our intervention would be uh, monitor cardiovascular status frequently. And the rationale for that would be regular monitoring helps detect early signs for decreased cardiac output and allows for timely interventions. Number two, administer antihypertensive medications as prescribed by the healthcare provider. These medications will help manage high blood pressure and reduce the uh, heart's workload, preventing strain on the cardiac muscle and, maintain, and maintaining, excuse me, adequate cardiac output. Number three, educate about the importance of maintaining a low sodium diet. Uh, rationale, a low sodium diet can help manage blood pressure levels, decrease the risk of heart failure, and supporting optimal cardiac output. Promote rest and sleep. Rationale, adequate rest can help reduce the metabolic demand of the heart, thereby improving cardiac efficiency and maintaining cardiac output. Number five, teach re relaxation techniques and stress management. This is very important. Um, stress can increase blood pressure and heart rate, both of which exert more pressure on the heart. Effective straight stress management can help and maintain a stable cardiac output. And so now that we've got all these down, our evaluation would be um, blood pressure is so you're gonna, you're, how, how well did your interventions work, okay? So evaluation. Blood pressure is controlled within a normal range. Your hospital or facility, your textbooks, your instructor will define that um, because everyone's gonna have a little bit of a slightly different one. So just please go by what your nursing instructor and your healthcare facility say. 
Uh, heart rate and rhythm are stable within normal limits observed in follow-up assessments. The patient reports the reduction in symptoms such as fatigue, dizziness, palpations, and don't forget, you might want to add in headaches if they're, if they're one of the patients that gets headaches with uh, hypertension. The patient demonstrates adherence to dietary recommendations and medication regime. The patient effectively uses relaxation techniques to manage and reduce anxiety about health. So now we're gonna move on to our second um, care plan. Okay, our next care plan is going to be deficient knowledge or knowledge deficit, but now it's deficient knowledge. Uh, so what we're gonna do is the subjective data will be patient expresses uncertainty about the causes and implications of hypertension, reports confusion over the prescribed medication regime, including dosages and timing. The objective data would be blood pressure readings indicate poor control meaning again, they're above 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. That patient has a history of missed or incorrectly scheduled medication at dosages. This actually ha happens a lot, especially with uh, the older population. Nursing diagnosis, deficient knowledge related to unfamiliar unfamiliarity with disease process and management strategies as evidenced by noncompliance with prescribed medications and therapeutic lifestyle changes and verbalization of incorrect information. Our goals, again, we're gonna have a short term and a long term. Short term, within one week. Now, when I say one week, let's just assume this is an inpatient. So short term is usually something while they're in the hospital, they're inpatient. They can be outpatient, obviously, but short term is a very short period of time. So short term goal, within one week. The patient will verbalize understanding of hypertension management, including medication adherence and lifestyle modifications. Now, when you're teaching about their knowledge about their medications, don't go from A to Z in one sitting and boom, you're done. Just remember, you need to kind of start with maybe the most important uh, things first. Um, why it's important to take their medications, what time to take their medications, make it brief, make it short because sometimes uh, if you give too much knowledge, you know, sometimes what you're telling them is may not stick. So what's the most important thing? Your medications need to be taken at this time. Well, write it down or get those little pill things that have AM, PM if they're at home to help them make sure they take the medications at the right time. Um, and then long-term, within one month, the patient will demonstrate effective management of hypertension through consistent medication adherence, dietary changes, and engagement in physical activity. Now, the engagement in physical activity, let's not tell them to start exercising an hour, four days a week. We're gonna start with like maybe five, 10 minutes, maybe working up to 15 minutes, you know, as they can tolerate. Uh, not every day, but three to four days a week, and then increase it if, if it, they can. Um, a lot of times this can um, discourage people if you're telling them they need to do something five to seven days a week. Just uh, baby steps. Nursing interventions with rationale. Provide comprehensive education on hypertension. Now, I say that, but remember, you want to do the most important things first, things that you think that they can kind of hold on to and remember. Education the patient about pathophysiology of hypertension and its potential complication helps in building understanding of importance in managing blood pressure, which may enhance compliance and motivation to adhere to treatment and lifestyle recommendations. Number two, demonstrate and rehearse medication management. Per easy, grab those little pill things. Okay, what are you gonna do in the morning? And they let them show you, let them repeat back what you say. And the rationale for this is teaching the patient how to properly take their medications, recognize their medication, and understand the dosages is important to timing and can improve adherence and prevent complications associated with improper medication use. Number three, guide through lifestyle modifications. And the rationale for that is assisting the patient in understanding and implementing lifestyle changes such as dietary adjustment, i.e. reducing sodium intake, increasing physical activity, weight management strategies can directly influence blood pressure control and overall cardiovascular health. And now that we've put all these things in, we're gonna look at the evaluation of our care plan. Um, the patient will accurately, the patient accurately describes the causes of hypertension 
and necessary uh, management strategies, including specific details about their medications, meaning purpose, timing, and dosage. The patient uh, implements li lifestyle modifications consistently as evidenced by a documented schedule of activities and meal plans. Blood pressure readings show improvement towards the goal range, reflecting effective understanding and management of the condition. So that's our second care plan. And I will apologize, the reason I do my test questions, I don't do them anymore, is because I actually start to lose my voice and it starts cracking, and that's just happened as I've gotten older. So <clears throat> forgive me for the crackling that's going to probably start happening before I end this final care plan. So our last and final nursing care plan is going to be activity and tolerance. And our subjective data is going to be the patient reports fatigue and weakness when attempting to moderate activities. Uh, I'm sorry, attempting moderate activities. Expresses frustration or lack of motivation to engage in physical exercise due to feeling easily tired. Describes feelings of breathlessness and palpitations on exertion. And then the objective data, which again is what we can see, is observation of decreased endurance in response to routine physical tasks. Uh, increase of heart rate, blood pressure, and dyspnea on minimal to moderate exertion. If they're kind of just walking to you and they're trying to just do something minimal and they're getting short of breath, you will see that. Our nursing diagnosis, activity and tolerance, relate to imbalance between oxygen supply and demand and increased energy expenditure, as evidenced by verbal reports of fatigue, objective findings of increased heart rate, and dyspnea with activity. Our goals, again, we have a short-term and a long-term. Our short, short term will be within two weeks, the patient will report increased tolerance to activity as evidenced by participating daily walks without excessive fatigue or dyspnea. Our long term goal will be within three months, patient will demonstrate improved physical endurance, enable a participation in 30 minutes of moderate exercise at least. I have five days a week without adverse symptoms, let's say three to five days on that depending on the age and, and the status of your um, client there. Nursing interventions and rationale. Gradual increase in activity levels. And the rationale for that will be gradually increasing the intensity and duration of physical activities helps enhance endurance and cardiovascular fitness without overwhelming the patient's current capacity, thereby reducing the risk of intolerance. Number two, educate on energy conservation techniques. Rationale, teaching techniques such as pacing activities, planning frequent rest periods, and ass using assistive devices can help manage fatigue and improve activity tolerance. Number three, monitor physiological responses to increased activity. Rationale, regular monitoring of heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate during activities will help identify the patient's tolerance level and guide adjustments to the activity plan to prevent overexertion or complications. And so now that we've done all this, our evaluation is the patient reports being able to engage in physical activities like walking without significant fatigue or dyspnea. Objective measures show stabilization in heart rate and blood pressure in responses to exertion. And then the patient successfully increases the duration and frequency of exercises, meeting the target goal of 30 minutes of moderate exercise most days of the week. And again, we're going to start slow on that, and then we'll increase as we go. So again, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net, and I'm also going to be starting to do some case studies. So if there's anything else you want to see me do on this channel, that I will be doing the test questions. Those will always be once to twice a week, regardless. But if there's anything else like case studies, nursing care plans, pathophysiology, um, just let me know in the comments below and um, I will be sure to try to get those out. I understand finals are coming up and I, I, know, I understand the stress. I, I see it in the students all the time. Um, so let me help you. You help me. Just let me know what you need and I am happy to help. Please go to nursestudy.net. We have absolutely more care. I think we have like over a thousand care plans for other disease processes there. It's all free. Um, so nursestudy.net and then just type in something like hypertension in the search bar and it will come up for you. Okay, so this is Anna from nursestudy.net. I hope you have a really good week.